Do you want more advanced technology in your devices? What if your computer could process information much more quickly or if your phone could reduce the time it takes to execute tasks? Most of us do, but given the state of technology today, it's probable they'll advance considerably more quickly than they already have. The clock rate of a single processor core has been stuck around a few gigahertz for the past 15 years, making extending the renowned Moore's Law more challenging. What do a computer and your brain have in common? Nothing. Although there are parallels between the ways the two operate. For instance, your brain has 100 billion neurons, microscopic switches that enable you to think and recall information. Computers have billions of tiny brain cells inside them. The building blocks of the brain are silicon-based transistors, often found in sand. How does a transistor operate, though? A transistor can be either simple or complex, depending on your perspective and level of technological knowledge. A transistor is a tiny electrical component with two distinct functions. It can function as a switch or an amplifier. When it works as an amplifier, a small electric current is fed into one end and a much larger electric current is outputted from the other. It functions as a current booster, in other words. Did you know that among the earliest applications of transistors were hearing aids? A hearing aid has a small microphone that converts environmental noises into varying electric currents. To listen to the noises around you considerably louder, these are fed into a transistor which amplifies them and drives a small loudspeaker. Transistors can also operate switches. A tiny electric current acting on one area of a transistor turns on a larger electric current working on another section of the transistor. In essence, this is how all computer chips operate. A memory chip, for instance, has hundreds of millions or perhaps billions of transistors that may be individually turned on or off. Each transistor has two unique states that allow it to store the integers 0 and 1. It can hold billions of zeros and ones in addition to almost as many standard numbers, letters, and characters by packing billions of transistors onto a single chip. Silicon, the material used to make transistors, rarely conducts electricity. Since silicon is a semiconductor, it isn't an insulator or a conductor. But how do transistors in your computer operate? A few transistor switches can be combined to form a logic gate which compares several input currents and produces different outputs. Logic gates enable computer to make simple decisions using a mathematical technique known as Boolean algebra. Unless you want to build your computer, the explanation only gets slightly simpler. Transistors do have a problem, though. Most people are familiar with Moore's Law and Gordon Moore's axioms, who was one of the co-founders of Intel. According to the law, the speed and capability of electronic devices should double every two years, and every year, tech companies introduce newer, faster, smarter, and better gadgets. Is there a limit to how far transistors can be decreased in size? Businesses like Intel mass-produce transistors 14 nanometers wide or 14 times wider than DNA molecules. The silicon that transistors are made of is to thank for that feed. The average atomic size of silicon is 0.2 nanometers. The possibility of making transistors even smaller is dwindling due to the approximately 70 silicon atom-wide transistors of today. There is no denying that we are rapidly approaching the limit of how small a transistor can be manufactured. How can we continue to make our technology function better? Optical circuits play a role in this. A highly energy-efficient optical switch developed by a multinational research team led by IBM and Skultec may eventually replace electronic transistors and usher in a new computer that manipulates photons instead of electrons. The switch also saves direct power and is quick and cooling free. It performs 100 trillion operations per second, 100 to 1000 times faster than the best commercial transistors. Most of today's electrical transistors require tens of times more energy to switch and those that employ single electrons to achieve comparable efficiencies are noticeably slower. Along with performance issues, the power-saving electronic transistors that compete with them frequently need large cooling apparatus, which uses power and raises operating costs. The new switch conveniently avoids these issues and operates at room temperature. 
The switch could be a component that links devices in addition to its primary transistor-like function by transferring data between them in optical signals. Additionally, it can act as an amplifier, increasing the strength of an incoming laser beam by up to 23,000 times. How does an optical transistor function? The device uses two lasers to switch between states and set them to zero or one. Another brighter laser beam is turned on or off using a feeble control laser beam. The device is effective because it only needs a few photons in the control beam. The microcavity, an organic semiconducting polymer that is 35 nanometers thin, a sandwich between highly reflective inorganic structures, is where the switching occurs. The purpose of the microcavity is made in this way is to confine incoming light for as long as possible to promote material coupling with the cavity material. The key to operating the switch is the production of short-lived exodon polaridons, a quasi-particle type produced when photons are strongly coupled to bound electron-hole pairs of excitons in the cavity material. The switch is illuminated by the brighter of the two pump lasers, which produce thousands of identical quasi-particles in precisely the same spot. This phenomenon is known as the Bose-Einstein condensate, and it encodes the device zero and one logic states. The research team used a control laser pulse to alternate between the two levels of the device, seeding the condensate just before the laser pulse from the pump arrived. The energy conversion from the pump laser is stimulated, increasing the number of quasi-particles in the condensate. The device's single state corresponds to the area's high particle concentration. To ensure minimal power usage, the researchers made several adjustments. The semiconducting polymer molecules by version helped the first practical switching. The challenge was to match the energy of one specific molecular vibration in the polymer to the energy gap between the pump and condensate states. Second, the group successfully determined the ideal wavelength to tune their laser to and put into practice a novel measuring strategy that allowed for single-shot condensate detection. Third, the noise from the device's background emission was reduced by carefully matching the control laser seeding the condensate with its detection strategy. These steps increased the device's signal-to-noise ratio and prevented the microcavity from absorbing too much energy, which would have heated it through molecular vibrations. The capacity of silicon to absorb visible light, which is crucial for absorbing sunlight in solar panels, was one difficulty the researchers encountered for a waveguide side where light absorption results in signal loss. This is not good. The researchers decided to use nanostructures known as high-contrast gratings to address the absorption problem, such as grating is made up of nanometer-sized posts, lined up to form a fence that keeps light from escaping. Light flowing between the 150 nanometer diameter posts is destructively impeded by a spacer that blocks light from going through them. To reduce the device's total power usage, which is now dominated by the pump laser that keeps the switch on, the team still has some work to do. The Paraskite supercrystal materials they are investigating with partners may provide a means of achieving that objective. Given their strong light-matter coupling, which in turn causes a potent collective quantum response in the form of superfluorescence, they have demonstrated excellent candidates. That is our video for today. We hope you like it. What are your thoughts on the new optical circuit? Can it make future devices faster than ever? Share all of your thoughts with us in the comment section below. Well, that's all for now. This is Big Tech Media. See you again tomorrow. Keep in mind to like, share, and subscribe.